Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us now call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fall, through my through my false fall, therefore I humble Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you imbued Blessed Maria Teresa with outstanding zeal for serving your people to persevering prayer and work. Grant that through her intercession, we may work with the same love, even amid hardships, and so dedicate ourselves to building up your church. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all the holy ones in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God at every remembrance of you, praying always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right that I should think of think this way about all of you because I hold you in my heart. You who are all partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How great are the works of the Lord. How great are the works of the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. How 
How great are the works of the Lord. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. How great are the works of the Lord. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. How great are the works of the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. In front of him, there was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus spoke to the scholars of the law and Pharisees in reply asking, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent, so he took the man, and after he had healed him, dismissed him. Then he said to them, Who among you, if your son or ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? But they were unable to answer his question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Good morning, Father. Today we are celebrating the optional memorial of Blessed Maria Teresa of St. Joseph Toucher. Let's just read the, the life of this uh, Blessed because I'm not really familiar at all with her. But it's nice to know her. So Anna Maria Toucher van de Boch was born in 1855 in Sandown, Brandenburg, in Poland. She is the daughter of a Lutheran pastor. At a young age, she was attracted to the Catholic Church and desired to become a sister. While serving as director of nursing at the mental hospital in Berlin, her desires were realized. She made her profession of faith on the 30th of October, 1888. In the following year, she read the autobiography of St. Teresa and understood that her vocation was profoundly Carmelite and one of service to the poor. She opened her first home for needy children in Berlin and others followed. In 1906, she received permission to gather her companions to profess vows and established the religious institute Carmel of the Divine Heart of Jesus, taking the name Maria Teresa of St. Joseph. Despite much suffering, her work grew and prospered in Europe and North America. After a long illness, she died in the order of sanctity 20th of September, 1938, and was beatified 13th of May, 2006. Okay, so that's uh, Blessed Maria Teresa of St. Joseph Culture, German. 
Virgin Germano. She was a German. And it's nice to know that she was a daughter of a Lutheran pastor and was converted to the Catholic faith. I don't know the rest of the story, but if you want to know more about the saint, you might just want to look for it on the internet. No? Okay, so let's just have a short reflection on the Gospel. Here, St. Luke narrated to us how Jesus was with the Pharisees. And notice that uh, Jesus oftentimes uh, dine or converse or have fellowship with the Pharisees. But very seldom, very rare in the Bible, in the scriptures, or particularly in the gospel, that you will see Jesus having fellowship with the Sadducees. Have you noticed that? Jesus seems to be always with Pharisees. But you cannot see, I, I, as, as of now, I cannot recall a single instance where Jesus dined with the Sadducees. Most often, the encounter with the Sadducees will be in a public uh, forum. But with the Pharisees, it would also be in the public venues or forum. But they would also go and have fellowship with them. Taking, for example, uh, dinner with them or lunch, I don't know, maybe breakfast. Pero nga, ay, sa mga parisay, sa mga sadyusay, yun, wala. What is the difference between the... Be, what, is, what is it there? Okay. Of course, we cannot... We cannot really go back to the original intent or to the original event. But we can read it from the text. One of the possible answers is this. The Sadducees according to scholars, are so recalcitrant, so hard-headed, that there is no more chance for them to retract or to change their minds. Unlike the Pharisees, in fairness to them, these are the people who are still open to possible to possibilities. There's a difference now according to scholars. Amasa Jusayo, wala na chance. They are so convinced of their own thinking that they do not open their minds anymore to Jesus. And besides, the Sadducees is a very small group. The elite actually they are the elite of the religious elite and they control the temple and they are the one who serves as liaison to the roman uh, empire between the israelites and the romans they are so close-minded according to scholars on the other hand the pharisees who are these pharisees i think i have mentioned this before but i'd just like to repeat it the Pharisees are actually lay, quotation marks, lay people with a few who belongs to the priestly class. But many of them, majority of them, are actually people who are not directly connected to the temple, unlike the Sadducees. And they come from all walks of life. But their desire is to be more, to be closer in terms of holiness to the Lord. That's why they would observe rituals that are most often rituals that are to be observed in the temple premises. Pero sa ilang uh, desire to become holy, they would even follow 
those observances that is ought to be practiced only in the temple, even in their own homes. That's why in the story, in the gospel, you will see that there are a lot of washing. Not only the washing of the feet, but the washing of the hands, the washing of the head and everything. Because actually these washing rituals, with the exemption of the washing of the feet, is actually being observed when you enter the temple, especially the, 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 the place where the sacrifice is offered. And I think many, some of you have been to the, to the Holy Land. You'll see that the compound, the complex, the temple complex is so large. Outside the sacred precincts, you can go there anytime. For example, in the courtyard of the Gentiles. In the courtyard of the Gentiles, it's almost a marketplace there. But when you enter already into the courtyard of the Israelites, now that is the time that you have to make ablutions. Just like the Muslims. Have you seen the Muslims when they, before they enter their majid, masjid or their mosque? They would clean their feet, they would clean their hands, they would wash their mouth. That is when you are in the sacred places. The Pharisees, in their desire to really become holy, those observances that are supposed to be done only in the temple precincts, they would even observe that in their own homes. So, in fairness to the Pharisees, their faith is not connected to power. Unlike that of the Sadducees, their faith is connected to power and economy. Why is it connected to power and economy? Because they serve as the liaison of the Roman emperors or the governors in Syria. Kaya kung wala sila, ang mga Hudiyo, hindi magpamati sa mga Roman Hon. So they are the, the religious elites, the religious leaders, and economy. Paano naman sila related sa economy? Well, of course, they transact business with the Roman uh, occupa, occup, uh, conquerors, but more so, the economy in the temple. Ang mga pareseyo yan, wala ni sila yan, power yan. They don't have power at all. And because they do not have power, they are able to have open mind sometimes. That's why Jesus would often go to them to the point that He is arguing with them, not because uh, for the sake of arguments, but because Jesus knew that they are still open for Conversion open for repentance. Okay. Place that in ourselves now. So, mga panahon. Ang muna yung problema, kung ara ikaw sa gahong, kaya kung ara ikaw sa gahong, hindi ka makahambal sa gusto mo nga ihambal. Because you will just follow whatever your boss or whatever your supreme leader <laughs> will tell you. That is the danger of being, well, connected to power. Uh, let us put that in the secular world. Kung ikaw uh, kabahin sa gobyerno, hindi ka makahambal sa mga bagay-bagay na gusto mo ihambal, batok sa gobyerno. E kung maghambal ka, tigok ka. Tigo ka in the sense, hindi ka pa, hindi pa patsyon. Kundi, he will be in the bad light. That's why, if you notice, people in the government will just echo whatever the president or those higher superiors to them in terms of policies. They have no choice. Can you convince people? To change that, to change their opinions or have opinions contrary to that of the leader, of course they would parrot whatever their, their, the president 
or whatever their heads will say. And that is not only in the, unfortunately, that is not only for those in government. It would even be even in the church. Have you noticed? During the time of John Paul, we have this particular program. During the time of Benedict, this is how we do it. And everybody follows. Now, in the time of Pope Francis, this is the program of Pope Francis, and everybody follows it. Nobody would dare, very few would dare to contradict. Well, precisely because you are connected to power. And do not expect changes or differences. Of course, you have to follow. It's normal. Hindi pala ka problema na yung karoon niya ang imo leader. Ang muna nga ba sa leader? Ang matapos nga ba mo yung lain? So that, that is natural in the order of things. Pero does it make you better? Well, I don't know. And that is also what happened to the Sadducees. Jesus did not bother to have fellowship with them. Why go po si Jesus inom sa ila? O kung magkaon? Nga how? Because Jesus knew, possibly, that they are not going to change their minds because power and economy are more powerful than religious convictions. But on the other hand, Jesus would, fe- would have fellowship with the Pharisees precisely because of that. They are not hindered by the, by power and economy in terms of secular, in terms of governance. Their only, their only motivation of the Pharisees is that they are, they, they just want to be holy. Ang mula na galing, ang problema, itaman sila ka holy, hindi naman sila kayo chindi sa mga tao na hindi holy. Kaya ang mula na sa aton, and we are also guilty of that. Unless we are compassionate. Eh, okay, sa, we tend to condemn people having the attitude that I am holier than thou. And that is also the danger for us. If leaders have this, if leaders have this uh, danger of being in the leadership, the followers, kita, will also have another danger of another kind, but still dangerous. Ano na siya? When we consider ourselves more holy than the rest, because we are following religious observances. Kung nag-aabot ang panahon, mas hiling kita nga, mas maayo, ako yung kagasimba ko sa Carmel, ado Adlao, ah, sadya na. Mas maayo, ako yung kagapangamuyo, ako yung sa Tanangan Nobina, kasi sa Torosario, kamuyo wala. Ah. Mas maayo, ako yung wala, ako yung nagapanginto sa ako isi katao. Ah, sadya na. When we start condemning and judging other people, because we thought that we are better than them. So my dear friends, what is the what is the solution? Not really a solution, but how do we make sense of all this? Well, I believe it is the call for repentance. Always that. And after all, Jesus said that repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance. Repentance for the Sadducees. Repentance for the Pharisees. Ang man sa aton, repentance of the clergy and repentance of the laity. Repentance in the part, on the part of the leaders and repentance on the part of followers. Always that is always the message. And besides, no, every time we celebrate the Mass, we always begin with the confession of our sins. Why? Because the call of repentance would always be there every day, every moment of our life. We are called for repentance. Ang masubo lang, patong ko na rin ang glaway ng akong uh, sermon, doon nag-lecture na ko din. Ang kata, pero at the end, this is the problem with us now, with the modern, the postmodern world. There is the normalization of sin normalization of sin. What do I mean? Wala na. 
Wala na sa sin na ginatawag. Not only not having the sense of sin, but we are actually normalizing sin. Sa so, una, lain man niya ang losing the sense of sin. Nga ikaw, wala ka na kamatsyag na sala na. Oh, okay. Kaya isa kabalan magigita. Ang ato kalag, kabalan. Pero hindi na naamu subong lang. Subong niya, it is the normalization of sin. Ano po sa inyo sa normalization of sin? Ah, hindi lang nadulaan ka na sa detection, sensitivity to sin, but that, that sin has become okay. Normal na lang. Normal na tanan. Tiko na lang, muna nga ito pa rin ng tanan galing okay man lang, ng tanan normal man lang, ate, there's no need for repentance. And that is what is sad. When we, out of emotional sensitivity, would just say, nga okay na na. Pag kabalo ka, hindi okay na. Di, paano nakaroon? Paano nakaroon ka repent? But in the first place, it is okay pa na. People who are thinking that they are just doing things that are okay will never come to repentance. Because after all, what is to be repented of? What is to repent of? Anyway, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, just like Jesus, he would, com- he would have fellowship with the Pharisees. Why? Because he knew that he can still convert these people. So may the good Lord also touch us to remind us that despite our efforts to become holy, there is still occasions, there are still opportunities for us to repent. Amen. So stand. Let us offer to God our prayers as we say, May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord. May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord. That the Christians may regard the commandments of God as doors to freedom from sin and evil. Let us pray to the Lord. May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord, that we may never put law above people, but practice first the great commandment of loving one another. Let us pray to the Lord. May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord, that we may have the true spirit of charity in dealing with the poor, and the oppressed, and that we may see Christ in them. Let us pray to the Lord. May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord, that the sick and those in the hospitals may be healed of their infirmities. Let us pray to the Lord. May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord, that the dead may now rest in the company of God. Let us pray to the Lord. May we render your praise for all your graces, O Lord. Almighty and loving Father, we pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the greatness of your saints, we humbly implore your majesty that their merits are which are pleasing to you, so to our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring into experience on this earth the gifts you promised in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gives you pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, let you fall, that them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Sebastian, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, and Pedro Calongson, and all the saints who have pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us now pray in the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer Shadi the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord.
this spring. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the saints, bearing in their body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all kneel for the Oratio Imperata. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion and of those government and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rob, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.